Welcome to Epic Conquerors. Your host, Dr. Judy Bauer and Chad Smanjack. You are epic. Everything is possible in Christ. The battle is real. The victory is assured. Welcome once again for joining us on the Epic Conquerors podcast. Tonight, Mama Jay and I are going to continue our series on spiritual growth. Over the last uh, couple episodes, we've touched on a couple points and just laying a foundation of what spiritual growth is and just helping bring some light to our community on how they can grow spiritually. So Mama Jay, tonight we're going to start off by just perhaps recapping and going over a couple of the points that we've discussed over the last couple of ser- um, podcasts. And uh, I was thinking that we could start right with uh, play, laugh, dance, and uh, what else? <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, this has turned into a little mini series, if you will. We originally thought we were just going to wrap this all up in one episode, but then we just kept expanding on it. So we're going into a little series here. But we would define this as spiritual growth, as the development of our inner man. And so our inner man is made in the image of God. So we're continuing to grow without even realizing it, just like how we grow in the physical and we don't even realize it. Because God is the author and the finisher of our faith. He's the one that's causing this growth to happen in our lives. And so as born-again believers in Christ, we have that wonderful joy of knowing that when we're in him, we're growing. Woo, that's awesome. That is awesome. And we touched on last time, Mama Jay, that uh, you know, all growth is spiritual growth. So yeah. for every believer, if you're a believer and uh, when you're going through this process, everything you do is spiritual growth. So that was a, that was a revelation that came through to us as we were you know, continuing down this conversation. Well, um, God is life and he's spirit, right? So anytime that anything is growing and it's alive, the spirit of God is involved and engaged in that. Um, so that was really awesome. So we did talk about, like you said, some of the tips that we've already covered are about playing and laughing. And we talked about how the joy of the Lord is our strength and it's our birthright to have joy. You know, joy is so different than happiness, right? Circumstances and things usually dictate whether we feel happy or not but joy is something that we can just grab a hold of like an anchor it comes from the spirit of god and it can hold us and give us strength so that was a powerful episode two episodes ago go back into the replays and listen to that one and then a dancing in other words just letting go and being free like a child is free to just dance around and oh it brings such joy to everyone when we watch them do that and then we talked about taking steps of faith And then we talked about the next couple. What were they, Chad? Well, we're talking about admitting weakness, Mama J. And that's uh, basically just discovering and, uh, you know, and walking out in, you know, confidence and just being honest and vulnerable and just allowing yourself to to be authentic. Um, I think that's a powerful one, too, is, you know, letting sometimes people, they associate vulnerability with weakness. But as we discussed previously, the vulnerability is actually strength. Yes, it is. So often we wear our faith face or our faith mask. You know, we tell everybody, oh, everything's fine and everything's not fine. And sometimes we need to just be able to admit that and have an honest conversation about it. So that was really good. And then another tip we talked about was walking and talking with God and how it's important to just stay so connected to the Lord 24-7 with our thoughts and our prayers. And then we talked about Number six, what was that, Chad? Be vulnerable with other people. Woo. And we, woo. And that's a tough one, like we said previously, especially for me. It's always difficult to, to open up to someone and just, you know, let them know exactly how you're feeling. And sometimes we, you know, we, we're so guarded and we, we hide all those things away from other people. But, you know, the, the scriptures tell us that community is everything. So when you come out and you're vulnerable And, you know, you pray through things and you actually come together in your community like we do in Epic Conquerors. It's amazing how much you can actually work through these processes. Um, So, you know, this is a big catalyst for growth. So I really encourage all of our uh, listeners, you know, find that community 
or that friend or those people that you can actually be vulnerable with someone that's going to, that's going to help you through that process. And uh, sometimes it takes a little work, doesn't it? To find that little inner circle that you can trust like that, you know, cause you have to, it's a little trial and error sometimes in the beginning, but you kind of figure it out. And uh, it's a rich treasure when you do find those people that you can, it's worth the investment that it takes to look for that because it is a real powerful part of our spiritual growth. Because God's all about connection. And when we find those connections, godly connections, whew, they are fantastic. So tonight or today, whenever it is you're listening to this podcast, we're going to move forward now on this list of spiritual growth tips that we've been talking through. And this one is on making choices that are healthy for us physically, like food and exercise and things like that. So, Chad, this is like your area where you the bomb. <laughs> Well, well, Mama J, even though you're saying make choices that are healthy physically, right? You know, like we just said, for me, healthy mind, healthy body. So when we make those choices physically, those same, those same choices that, that you make physically, like to take care of your body, those also help, they're catalysts for you in your spiritual growth too. So, you know, they have positive implications in your life right across the whole thing. I'm a big believer that when you have that discipline to, to constantly you know, make the right choices and put yourself in that position to grow physically, you will grow mentally and you'll grow spiritually as well. Yeah, life is all about choices, isn't it? Uh, that's huge, really, when we think about it, because wherever you are in life right now is a result of all the choices you've made up to this moment. So but if we're not happy you- with something, we need to make some different kind of choices. Well, and it's important to nourish your body and your yeah. soul, right? And your spirit. Because if your body's undernourished, then it can't grow. Um, and the same goes for your, your spiritual life. If you're not constantly nourishing it and taking care of it and looking after it, it ain't going to grow. So you need to feed it with the Word of God. You need to feed it with communication with other people in your circle and just basically being in His presence. Yeah. Uh, I was thinking about my uncle... Swede years ago, he's with the Lord now, but he ended up his latter years with uh, being in a paralyzed coma. And he was such a man full of uh, energy that being trapped in that body was something that just about drove him crazy mentally. And uh, through learning how to peck out different letters to communicate, he was able to, with my aunt, share her with her because all of a sudden then he just changed his whole demeanor still trapped in that coma situation in his body paralyzed but what he tapped out was that when he was so angry and frustrated and he just thought he was going to literally lose his mind the holy spirit spoke to him and said but son i'm in here with you and he said as soon as those words he heard him in his spirit he just had peace and he was able to be okay you know, because sometimes I think, we think, well, if our if we're not physically 100% healthy, then, you know, shucks, you know. But sometimes there's a situation in our life where we lost a limb or we're paralyzed or we have a debilitating handicap or something like that. But you can still make choices to the best of your ability to be the healthiest that you can be. But should there be a situation where you're in something that you can't do anything about it, God is still in there with you, just like he was with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in that fiery furnace. So I just feel like to share that with this audience on this particular episode, because somebody out there perhaps is listening to this and they're feeling trapped somehow in a circumstance or in their body, but know that God is in there with you. And so just relax into that peace that he has for you and know that he's going to help you in that situation. Yeah, Mama Jay. And you know, the choices we make you know, are what define our life. It's so important because you make good choices, you change the whole dynamic of how you move forward in your life. You know, one of the other things that we were talking about as well with regards to growth um, and spiritual growth is prayer, right? Prayer is such a foundational, powerful part of our growth. That connected, mindful prayer that's focused, you know, not just you know, absent-minded prayer where you just, you know, 
praying without any intent, but just focus repetition of prayer is so powerful. And I think that is a foundational part of our spiritual growth. And that goes along with the story that I was just sharing. When he was talking to the Lord, that's where God was able to communicate back to him and give him the peace. So prayer is extremely essential to our growth, our overall well-being spiritually, emotionally, physically, and in every way. We just by prayer, show our dependence upon the Lord. And that right there is a powerful posture for us. Yeah, because as we go through, our minds are like the filters that, and it's through these filters that we experience our life. You know, our minds mold and they shape the environment, the experiences that we see, you know, the the repetition of the inputs. You know, sometimes we can't always change the environment or escape the experiences, but what we can do is decide what we want to see and listen to, and what we put into our minds. And I think it's so important because what we feed our minds, you know, it's kind of like when you, if you think of racing a car, if you don't put the good gas inside your race car, it's not going to run very good, right? So that's so right. Important. That's what I'm told. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I know from when I was racing, yeah. you know, it was so important to have the right gas. Yeah. Like we used to no, have 102 true. octane gas because then the car, the bike ran well. So it's the same thing for our minds and our bodies and everything else. Make sure that you feed in it on a daily basis. Yeah. And, and that Create you the right it. environment. Yeah. 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 And so. those are choices we make. And if you're in an environment that's unhealthy, remove yourself from that. Yeah. Change that up as soon as you are aware of that. That's really, really important. And the last one we wanted to touch on for this particular episode in our series is processing our honest emotions. Okay, how are we going to do that, Chad? Well, that's a difficult one, Mama Jay, because we're so used to masking what our true emotions are. So, you know, so many times when you, you know, come in contact with people, you never really know what their honest emotions are because you get that facade, right? So, um, you know, you, it's, it's one of those things that, you know, comes through communication and discussing it and, you know, just being around people all the time. If our emotions are clogged up or layer upon layer of situations have happened and we haven't processed through those things, it really sets up a barrier, doesn't it, for us to be able to experience uh, life fully, to experience love fully, to experience joy fully, because we've got all these barriers there. So, Learning to unlock that emotional vault in us and being able to express what we're really feeling before God and with a trusted friend and with ourselves, uh, that's really, really important. And sometimes journaling will help some people be able to do that. They can just write it out. And Some people, you need to just get in front of a mirror and just talk to yourself <laughs> how you're feeling, what's going on, you know. And it's so interesting, Chad, when we do that, out of that will come the real truth of what's underneath all of that. And if we'll dig into that well and discover that truth, that truth will set us free. And once we know what's at the bottom of that thing, we can be released from it. And I, th- and I think it's a process. You've got to just, you know, like you said, journaling or finding a way or finding a group of people or friends that you can honestly just run through the process and feel safe and secure. Because, you know, when you come to emotions, it's such a touchy subject because, you know, it's so easy to get hurt. And so many people get hurt when they start to be vulnerable and express those emotions. So, Having someone in your life, you know, having friends or mentors or spiritual brothers and sisters that you can truly sit down and work through it because it's really a process, right? It's kind of like running your hose. You just got to sit down and journal it or just, you know, just start talking it through. And eventually you'll start to see as you work through it and talk it through, the solutions start to show up and God starts to give you that revelation and slowly but surely start to heal through that process. Yeah, I remember one time somebody... Uh, hurt me very, very deeply, and I was literally crushed. And I was in another country, and I was at a hotel, and I'd come back from a meeting, and this person just reamed me right in front of everybody. And I was just crushed to the core. My emotions were just battered, and I went into my room and got before the Lord and just cried out my heart of everything that I could just pour out of me of what I felt like as a result of that public humiliation and everything. 
And the Holy Spirit spoke to me as soon as I got it all out. And that's the important part. When you get it all out, <laughs> and the Lord can deposit truth, and that truth will set you free. But when I got it all out, the Lord spoke to my spirit, and he said, Judy, did you share what I told you to share? And I said, yes, Lord. And then he said, all is well. And as soon as he said, all is well, this peace came all over me. And it didn't matter anymore. It didn't hurt anymore. It wasn't, you know, a painful situation anymore. It was just gone. But that only came after I was willing to just pour out my whole guts (laughs) for the Lord, you know. And that's not an easy thing to do. And um, it's just a powerful discipline. But when we do those kind of things, it really does release within us the presence of God and the healing power of God. And it really does set us free, thank God. So it was a powerful experience. I'll never forget it. I think it's also that it's that humbling process, like you're saying right there, because you know it's so difficult sometimes for us to admit that we need other people in our lives, right? Because we go through life wanting to be in charge of everything, and you know when you when you vulner, when you're vulnerable and you admit that you needed someone else, it's it's kind of like you you're getting to a point where you're putting pride aside, right? Because it's the yes. pride that comes up, it starts to rear its ugly head. Because everyone wants to be a self-made man or self-made woman. But the reality is that you can't get through any of these processes without God. So once you humble yourself down and you go through that process and you realize that everything, it's all about him, leaning on him, seeking his guidance, slowly but surely that this whole process starts to disappear and it becomes a lot easier to get through. Yeah, and God is so faithful, Chad. I mean, I've walked with him all my whole entire lifetime and you've walked with him many years as well. And I believe that both of our testimonies would be the same. God is so faithful to be with us through everything that we go through. It's just, he astounds me how amazing he is, how mindful he is of us, and how much we can rely upon him. When everybody else fails us, God will never fail. That's really so exciting. Never leave you nor forsake you. And I mean, that's, that's an affirmation, a scripture that I constantly you know, every time when I get down into a situation, I feel like, man, I just can't see the, the light at the end of this tunnel. You know, I just keep going back to that. The Lord will never leave you. He'll never forsake you. Yes. You know, Mama Jay, one of, the, one of the big things as well is growing with friends. You know, I, you know, I think that's so important for all of us is to have that circle of friends. Because if you go to the scriptures, I know um, if you read through Hebrews 10, 24 to 25, it says, let us think of ways to motivate one another to acts of love and good works. And let us not neglect our meeting together as some people do, but encourage one another. So yeah, that's a that, powerful scripture. It's in that encouragement, right? And that meeting one another and they're talking through your situations that you get to reflect with one another and see, you know, as you go through your process and you're telling them what you're feeling or, you know, the pains and, and, and the things that you experience in your life journey, you know, it's not only is it helping you, but it's helping that person that's listening to you as well. Yeah. God really takes advantage of every situation and he really amplifies and makes the most out of it. It's fantastic. I tell you, we serve an awesome God, Chad. We really do. And I know our Epic Conqueror community is well aware of that as well. Our God is an awesome God. Well, as we continue on this particular series, we're at that point now, right now, in this episode, where we're going to choose our weapon to spotlight, our spiritual warfare weapon. So out of what we've talked about in this one, what would you choose, Jad, for your weapon? I'm going to choose prayer while you're thinking about yours. (laughs) Maybe I stole yours. I don't know. (laughs) But I'm going to choose prayer. I think just having that communication with God is the most important spiritual weapon that we could ever have because whenever we're in fellowship with God, we are in the safest of all places. Wow. Because we're talking with him. We're right up close and personal. And so that would be my weapon. So I I was thinking my weapon would be, it's almost, it's very similar to yours, but communication and expression. Because I think it's, you know, it's the communication, the expression of your feelings and, and just communicating where you are in your life's journey and things like that, that help you to grow spiritually. So, you know, um, the sword of the spirit is a two-edged sword, right? So we'll always find those two compatible 
sides that work together. So prayer and expression. And what did you say? What was the other word? Expression and communication. Communication. Yeah, Mm -hmm. very important. Wow. And those take skills to develop that part, but we get better and better at it as we work it. So that's really, really good. All right. And then when we have that spiritual weapon to spotlight, we also do our epic power affirmation. And in this series, we're choosing I am made in the image of God because that's such a privilege for us to know that we resemble our Heavenly Father, that He created us in the womb. He knit our parts together, and He has just been with us from the very instant of our conception. I mean, how amazing is that? So being made in the image of God is such a powerful affirmation to know that we're not junk we're not uh, unworthy, we're, we're not uh, devalued, but we are made in the image of God. Wow, that's, you can't get any better than that, really. I mean, Mama Jay, when you actually say that and you let that just like settle inside your spirit, you're made in the image of God, the creator of the universe. I mean, how much more powerful can you get? Well, yeah, if you look at a child and they introduce their parents to someone. This is my mommy and this is my daddy. They're just like so proud of that parent. And in that same way, we can be so proud of our parent, our heavenly father. And so being made in his image, that is really a wonderful position to be in for sure. So here we do it. We know how we do it. We do our drum roll. And then on the count of three, we say all together, shout it out loud. I am made in the image of God. So are we ready? Here we go. Drum roll. Wherever you are on your desk, your dash, your car, steering wheel, whatever you call it. (laughs) On the count of three, one, two, three. I I am am made made in the image image of God. God. Powerful. Um, You know, whenever we say these affirmations, Chad, something just wells up from the inside. It just very freeing and powerful. I just love it. This has been a great episode. I just want to remind all of our Epic Conqueror listeners how much we appreciate so much that you share these podcasts with your friends and loved ones and on your social media. We have an Epic Conqueror Facebook page where we have shareable graphics so that you can share this with others. And then we also have our Epic Conquerors Facebook group. We invite you into that community where we do Facebook lives and posts and things in there. We'd love to have you join us. So we just wanted to give you that invitation before we say ciao for now on this episode. But before we leave, Chad, what would be like a parting thought that we can leave our community with? You know, Mom, I was just thinking about that. And what, what came up to me was to, um, you know, work hard, like work hard at whatever you're doing, but always remember that the best contribution will always come from just being connected to the divine, to God, to your creator, to the Lord Jesus Christ. Ooh, I like that so much. Yeah. Purposefully, intentionally work on your relationship with God and others. That's going to be the best treasure ever in your life for sure. That's so awesome. Somebody said that the other day, and I did mention it a few weeks ago, this same thought, but when it came up again yesterday, I thought, okay, maybe we need to repeat that again. Nobody on their deathbed says, oh, I wish I would have worked another day. But they do say, oh, I wish I could have one more conversation or see this person or that person one more time. So connections with God and with others is truly our biggest treasure. So everybody work on that and you'll be so glad you did. All right. This was awesome, Chad. Are you ready? We're going to say ciao for now and we're going to catch them on the next episode. Every Monday and Friday, we drop new ones. So we're looking forward to seeing you then. Ciao for now. Ciao for now, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.